Hello everyone, I'm Asena Boschnak. I'm a producer at TRT World and I work in the digital content department. I've been working here for the past five years now and I've been in many different teams and I've taken on many different roles. Right now I make digital videos. There are many different ways of telling a story through a video. There are in-depth explainers where we try to break down complex elements of a new story and we really try to go deep into the subject. This period is intended to give the UK and EU time to negotiate their post-Brexit relationship. There will be a lot to negotiate and top of the list for the UK is a trade deal which ensures a tariff and quota-free flow of goods. And then there are short-form videos where we apply the same principles but we give our audience bite-sized pieces where we explain the different elements of the story. You probably recognize these videos as fast-moving, text-on-screen videos on the social media. The goal here is to get the content out fast, and that's what I'm gonna talk to you guys about today. 60 seconds may look too little to tell a story, but you will realize this time cap forces you to really get down into the core of the story while leaving some room for creativity as well. To be honest, at the end of the day, that's what your audience is looking for. And believe me, when not executed properly, 60 seconds might seem like forever. Probably wondering how all these work. Here's a quick rundown. It all starts with finding a pitch or finding a good story. And for this, we have many sources. We have our correspondents, agencies, other news outlets, and maybe more important and timely now than ever, the social media. We usually pick three to four stories and after a quick meeting with our editors, we go with the strongest one. You will actually notice over time that this process gets easier and you naturally bring your strongest pitches to the table. Once you've picked your story, it's now time for scripting. And this is where you can get really creative about how you want to tell your story. Here are some examples of how flexible you can be in your execution. You can make a video like this when you have really strong visuals. We are straight side in an empty ortico. Normally, this place would be filled with people buying trinkets, souvenirs, and street food. And now, it's the most silent I've ever heard it. But you can really tell a difference in the air quality now, as Istanbul's air pollution has been down 30% since January. Istiklal Street, where I am right now, was a street that you could barely walk down without bumping into people, attracting almost 3 million people on the weekends alone. Now, I mean, it speaks for itself. This when you have a really strong sound bite. I'm witness to a massacre. I want people to know that that is the right word to use. That first day, the first original moments of protest when people took to the streets with those slogans, the people want the fall of the regime, free Syria. I think that was the moment that Assad lost um, because he lost the fear of the people. But the price that's been paid for that uh, is horrifying. Something like this when you want to give a little context.
when you have a lot of debate happening around your story, you can use that discussion to drive your video in a format that looks like this. The great thing is, we can make each of these separately and bring them all together in a Twitter thread that looks like something like this. When you're writing your script, be conversational, meaning keep your ideas or words simple and easy to understand. And most importantly, don't keep your audience guessing. Give the crucial information and leave out the unnecessary ones. Picking a story while our main focus is the content, we also have to make sure we have good quality images and videos that we can support our story with, otherwise our video is better off being an article. But it's not always possible to find images taken from the field or finding images that are directly related to our story. This is when producers rely on stock footage. These are videos or images that we can pull off from our digital libraries or content archives and they can be repurposed. Let's say we're making a video about the development of a coronavirus vaccine. If we cannot find footage of scientists conducting the research, we can always use stock footage from labs, scientists or vaccines. So finding good footage is not as difficult as it sounds. At this point, the editor and the copy editors have already checked the script and the visuals and the project moves to the video editors where they work their magic. And then we move to the most crucial part of this process that can make or break all your hard work. Social posts are tweets, Facebook posts, YouTube or Instagram excerpts. This is basically what sells your story. Ideally, you should know what you want to say before even you start your story. In simple terms, this is the hook you want to use to grab the attention of your audience and lead them into your story. Remember, people are bombarded with tons of information on the social media, so you have to make sure your posts are engaging. Almost like you're talking to your audience or even asking them questions. Once these are finalized, our social media team does its magic. And that's it, the video is then published. I hope this quick rundown gave you an idea of how this process works and make you feel excited about trying it out yourself. In the end, one important thing to remember is that formats and media of storytelling constantly change. But the basics and purpose of journalism don't change. And we must be very mindful of that when we experiment or test out new methods. That's all from me, I hope you liked the video and please stay safe.